Hi folks, Will from MinIO here, and in this video we're going to be talking about object lifecycle management. And the reason why we have lifecycle management is because as your applications generate more and more data, maintaining control over all of that storage becomes very important. While it's possible to expand storage pretty much infinitely, it does become cost prohibitive at a certain point. So we want to make sure that we can control how much data we're actually storing. In particular, if we have different levels of servers, if we have some very fast servers, maybe some slower servers, we want to make sure that the most relevant data is on the fast servers. Maybe our older stale data goes onto our slower servers. So let's take a look at some of the topics we're going to be talking about in our environment today. We're going to be talking about object expiration as well as object tiering. Now, these are the two forms of object lifecycle management that we have. And we're also going to take a look at all the different options that you have when you are doing your object lifecycle management. Let's dive right in. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, am I going to expire these objects or am I going to transition these objects? And there are some implications for both. Let's talk about expire first. When we're doing expire, this is really the simplest form of lifecycle management that you can have. The objects are basically removed once they reach a certain age. Now, those objects are gone for good. This does not create a delete marker. Object lifecycle management does not create delete markers. Now, it can work with delete markers, but it does not create them itself. Delete markers are really only created when a client performs a delete of an object. When we are doing this expire, if the object was deleted by lifecycle, the object is not going to be replicated. Okay. Now, those of you who have watched our replication video are like, well, wait a minute, but it, it replicates delete markers just fine. We saw that. Well, Again, object lifecycle management doesn't create a delete marker, so it's not going to replicate a delete marker since it didn't create one. As a general rule, only the client-driven deletions are going to be replicated because those are the only ones that create delete markers. The other option that you have for object lifecycle management is to transition the object. This moves the object to a different server, also known as a different tier. This does require some additional setup. You can't just tell it to expire it like we do with the expire. With transition, you have to tell it what tier you're going to send it to. Now that said, you can set up a single tier as the destination for many different clusters. This is not, this is not replication. It does not serve the same purpose as replication. So your single tier can be the destination for many clusters. We're not replicating objects. We are just transitioning them. Objects are still available via the original server. This is important because it means that you don't have to change your application code or anything to access the object the way you had always been accessing it. A link is set up between the original tier and the transition tier, and you access the object through the original server. Now, this does mean that you have to have exclusive access to the transition objects. You cannot have various different services trying to access that object through different means. You have to access it all through MinIO, otherwise this transition is not going to function properly. So let's take a look at actually setting up a tier. I'm going to use the MC admin set of commands. Now what this should be telling you is I'm actually setting this up server wide. When you set up a tier, it is available for the entire server. The object lifecycle management rules are for a particular bucket, and we'll see how we set that up in just a minute. But setting up the tier is server wide. So I'm adding this tier, and the type of tier is MinIO. That's not my alias in this case. This is actually the type of tier. You can also use S3 or Azure. Take a look at our documentation. You can see all the different types that we support. Local is the alias. This is the server that's going to use my tier, okay? And my tier name is Icebox. You can name it whatever you want. Following that Icebox tier name, I have to tell it how to connect. So in order to connect this, I need to have Icebox 9000. That's my endpoint. I need to have an access key and a secret key. That access key and secret key needs to have certain permissions associated with it. Take a look at the documentation again to see all the permissions. And then I tell it which bucket that I'm going to be sending my transitioned objects to. And if there's a prefix that I want to send in that bucket as well, I can hand it a prefix here. The prefix is not required. I can just use a straight bucket if I want to. And that's setting up a tier. So now my local MinIO deployment can use this tier for all of its transition lifecycle management rules. When I transition an object, the transitioned objects are not going to be directly accessible on the replication tier. Again, a transitioned object is only accessible from its original tier. 
This should also be telling you that transition is not a replacement for replication. They serve different purposes. And once you have transitioned an object, if you need to restore it back to the original tier, you can restore it with MCILM Restore. So just something to keep in mind. When you transition an object, it's no longer accessible in replication. That's something to keep in mind. All right. So whether you're using expire or transition, some common options exist between both of them so that you can understand which objects are going to be impacted by your lifecycle management rules. The age setting allows you to expire or transition objects after a certain time. There's also a prefix filter and a tag filter that you can use. These all determine which objects are impacted by the rule. So let's dig into the age setting here. You have a number of days that you can set. Now, it's not hours, it's not minutes, seconds, you can't set years or weeks or anything, it's only days. And you just give it a number. Now, you can set zero days for expire days or transition days. Now, if you're doing a transition day, make sure you do your transition tier as well so it knows where to put the object. But the reason why you would set a zero day for something like this is because you have other criteria, maybe a prefix or a tag, or maybe older versions that you're using that you are going to set in addition to this zero days. You wouldn't just set zero days. Otherwise, if you were setting zero days, you would just put stuff on the other tier or you would just never upload it anyway. But what's going to happen is when the object lifecycle management scanner comes through and starts tagging things, it's going to say, oh, zero days, that means everything I find in here should go. That's why you would want to have some other tool there. Now, in this case, I'm not going to really be doing a lot of zero day stuff, but what you will see is maybe a 30 day or a 90 day and you just give it a 30 or a 90 or what have you. We'll see some examples in just a minute. So that's the age setting. It's always days. You can filter. So here's a case I might, I might do zero days, but a filter of immediate, right? A prefix of immediate. So this is going to limit the life cycle to a particular prefix in the bucket. Dash dash prefix is what you're going to use. So, so imagine we have a bucket with a new and a processed prefix. I could set up one rule for the new, which says expire anything that I see in new, and anything in process, we're going to transition it. And I could set that to zero days or 90 days or whatever I want. But this prefix will allow us to just focus in on objects that are in a particular prefix on the bucket. The last one we're going to look at is the tag filter. I can set up a series of key value pairs, basically saying if this tag is this value, if this tag is that value, and what's going to happen is, is this allows you to set up very, very specific lifecycle management. You'd have to set certain tags on your objects. It's part of the metadata of the object. Now, this is a logical and with the prefix filters and with the age filters. All of the conditions have to be met okay, in order for these to fire. We're going to take a little break here before we finish this up in our next video. If you'd like to reach out with us, you can connect with us using any of the methods you see here on the screen. You can even chat with us interactively on Slack at slack.min.io or just leave a comment here on the video. We'll see you in the next video.